After the death of Khadija bint Khuwailid and her, the Prophet was sad. He was mourning and he was in grief. And his companions noticed that he had daughters in his home with no woman to take care of them. Everything was occupying his mind with a touch of grief and sadness. His suggestion for him to get married was proposed to him by Khawla bint Hakim the wife of one of his beloved companions. She suggested, Oh Prophet, why don't you get married? And Prophet Wasallam said, who, who should I get married to? What are the proposals you have for me? And Khawla bint Hakim, what your love and her, said, Oh Prophet, a virgin or someone that is not a virgin. He asked her, who was the virgin? And she said, the daughter of your most beloved companion, Abu Bakr Siddiq, what your love and who? His daughter, Aisha, bint Abu Bakr, what your love and her? Then the Prophet wasalam, said, who is the non-virgin? And she said, Sauda bint Zam'a, what your love and her. Then the Prophet wasalam, complimented her when he had her name and he said, Go and check them out if there is any acceptance from them. I'm not going to go into the acceptance of Aisha or your love and her because in today's story it is about Sauda bint Zam'a, what your love and her. So Khawla bint Hakim went to meet Sauda bint Zama'a and she asked her that what blessing has come your way? And Sauda asked, what is that? And she said, the Prophet has sent his proposal out to you. And immediately she heard that she was overwhelmed with joy. It never crossed her mind. It's never crossed her mind. She never, in fact, it wasn't in her widest dream that the prophet could, you know, send a proposal to her. And she said, I wish, please go and speak to my father. But Sauda's father was not a Muslim. He was a staunch enemy of Islam. So Khawla bint Hakim went to meet the old man. And she said to him, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, had sent me to ask for Sauda's hand in marriage. When he had his name, he said, well, he's an honorable man. He's a worthy person. So he asked Khawla bin Hakim that, what was Sauda's response when you told her? Because it really matters. When a proposal is brought to someone's father, a wali, he should also care about his daughter's feelings too. So there is nothing like forceful marriage or things like that in Islam. So Khawla bit Hakim told her father that, yes, she said she loves that. And her father said, go and call for Sauda. So her father addressed her that Muhammad has sent a proposal to you. Would you like me to marry you to him? And she said, yes, father. So he said to Khawla to go call the prophet. And when the prophet saw Allah came, he got her married to him. So now who is this Sauda? May Allah be pleased with her. And what is her story? Sauda's name is, a full name is Sauda bint Zama'a ibn Khais al-Amrija. Al Qurashi and her mother's name was Ashumos bint Khois. She is the first woman the Prophet وسلم, married after the death of his late wife Khadija bint Khuwailid. God love and her. And the Prophet remained with Sauda for three years and she had no other co wives. She was amongst the first to accept Islam among the companions in Mecca. 
she and her husband, who was her cousin, his name was Asakron Ibn Amr. They both accepted Islam and suffered greatly from the hands of the idol worshippers in Mecca. Because they did not have much power or influence, and they, they did not have the backing of a strong tribe to defend them, so they fled Mecca and they migrated to Abyssinia. They crossed the Red Sea on boats, and only Allah knows best the kind of boats it was. They lived there under the protection of an Najashi who gave them safe haven and allowed them to worship Allah as they wished. Let us worship Allah. Allah says in Surah Al Buruj, the enemies of Islam, the only thing that they do not like is that we worship Allah alone. So they stayed in Abyssinia worshipping Allah, though their hearts were still connected to Mecca, to Karaba, to their homeland. And in their surprise, rumors spread like wildfires in Abyssinia amongst the Muslims that all the idol worshippers have accepted Islam. They were so happy, they were joyful, they realized that this is the time for them to go back to their homeland, only to discover after a treacherous journey across the raging sea in boats that only Allah knows what it was made of. When they reached Jeddah and then moved on foot to Mecca in a journey that took them four or five days. When they reached there, exhausted and tired, they were faced by the brutal reality that what they heard about the idol worshippers accepting Islam was fake news. It was a lie. So each one of the migrants looked for one of the dignitaries in Mecca to enter in his protection and they managed to do so, except Asakron and his wife Sauda. They had no one and after that long journey, Asakron who was in his late 50s or perhaps in his early 60s fell ill and died leaving a widow who was the only Muslim among our family who were all idol worshippers. She had no one to turn to so you can imagine the grief she was in. And for what? Because of La ilaha illallah. Here was the breakthrough when the Prophet Wasallam proposed to her. She accepted in a heartbeat. She would not think twice. Who would think twice? Who would think twice? What we can learn from this is that the Prophet's marriages were not based on his desires of women, though that would have been totally acceptable and normal. No one in his right mind would condemn a man for liking women. This is human nature. This is what Allah mentioned in the Quran that it was it was beautified in men's hearts the love of women the love of women, children, gold, and silver. After the death of Khadija, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, married a woman in her early 50s, a woman described in the books of history as being huge and big in size. Yes, that's Sauda. That anyone could identify her though she is fully covered from head to toe but she can be identified by her size it was narrated in an authentic hadith that one day Sauda went out of the prophet's house fully covered and umar who saw her and said to her oh Sauda, we recognize you we recognize you as Sauda 
and she went back immediately and complained to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam over what umar has said and then allah revealed to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that it is permissible for women to leave their homes for necessities yes this is for you to contemplate now we have to say this even in nigeria currently as it's last year last two years there were some rumors some rubbish going on by some fake scholars that the prophet is a, is a womanizer he marries young women he marries gineco gineco he likes intimacy things like that in fact rumors that you will never imagine that someone could say that the prophet Allah, he was saying, choose he chooses women only for their religious commitments and this um Sauda bin Zamar have said her age when the prophet married her. She is a widow and she needed someone to protect her. And the prophet took it upon himself to be that person. This is for you to learn that when you get married, it is not the beauty that counts. It is not the wealth. If she fears Allah, she would make your house a paradise. If you fear Allah, you would make your house a paradise. Three years the Prophet lived with her. He never ever complained about her or said anything negative about her. She was a good, righteous, and pious woman. She was also a smart woman that, after the Prophet married different wives for many reasons, I will discuss later, inshallah. She felt that she was too old for the prophet to give him his marital rights. So she took the initiative and said to the prophet that I love what you love and what I care about is your peace of mind. And because you love Aisha her, yes, Aisha was already a, prof a wife of the prophet as at that time yes that was that was like after three years so she said she grants aisha willingly and happily a night so every night you go to your wives when it's my night when it's my turn don't come to me go to aisha the, the prophet wasalam, appreciated that for her Mother Aisha and her herself said, There is no woman on earth I would like to be like, or I would like to be in her shoes, except Sauda bin Zamar. She was a wise woman. She did not have what we call possessive love. After the death of Prophet, وسلم, it was Sauda that died first. May Allah be pleased with her. She was the most generous amongst the prophet's wives. She was mother of the poor and the needy. She died at the reign of Umar bin Khattab. And Allah Azza wa Jal knows best. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.